Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Our main story this lunchtime. An inquest jury finds the 96 people who died at Hillsborough were unlawfully killed. There were celebrations for the families of those who died. They have waited and battled for 27 years to get justice for their loved ones. And it is a long time ago, 27 years, but justice finally delivered for the families of the dead at Hillsborough. And justice that many of them wouldn't have dared to dream of, actually, when it comes to that twin conclusion that, A, their family members, their sons and daughters were unlawfully killed and B, that the fans, the Liverpool fans, had nothing to do with the tragedy, no contribution to the tragedy whatsoever. This story is emblematic of absolutely everything that's wrong with British society. It was wrong 27 years ago, and it's wrong now, because there was collusion, one cannot help but wonder, between the police, who have been found to have contributed to the tragedy in a way that the fans never did, and then elements of the media not questioning the police. This is why it is so important to be uh, deeply intolerant of links between journalists and police officers. When you hear journalists talking about their friendships with senior members of the Metropolitan Police here in London, you realise where that road can lead. That road can lead to truth being buried for 27 years. second part of the Leveson inquiry, of course, was due to examine precisely that much more modern context, the links between journalists and police officers, inappropriate, certainly, illegal, possibly. In the context of Hillsborough, lies were told while the bodies were still warm on the front pages, or actually no, on one front page of one national newspaper under the headline The Truth. And it's taken 27 years for those families to actually get the truth. And the truth is their fathers, their mothers, their sons, their daughters died through no fault of their own, through no fault of their own, and unlawfully. Let's remind ourselves of that dread day, 15th of April 1989. Absolute chaos here at the moment, a good start, but we have chaos with fans on the field, I'm afraid to say. The police have been guiding spectators out of the end, away to my left-hand side. And some of those spectators have spilled onto the field, but clearly something has gone badly wrong at that end of the ground where the Liverpool supporters are. I was, uh, I still am a Nottingham Forest fan. They were the other side playing in that semi-final at Hillsborough. And I remember watching the game and not really realising. It's not sound like an odd analogy, but, but anyone else who witnessed it will probably understand why. It was, it was like when Tommy Cooper died on stage. And you, you thought something else was going on. You thought, it was almost like your brain tries to describe what you're seeing in a way that is not the truth. It can't be what it looks like. And as time progressed, of course, it, uh, it became impossible not to realise what had happened. For me, that there was an item of commentary which we didn't contain within that clip. And I can't tell you that I remember hearing it on the day, because I don't know. I've heard it so many times since. And it, it involved the BBC commentator describing a young lad who he described, I think, as pale and shaking clambering into the press box at Hillsborough, which, which I've sat in. My dad was on the Sheffield Telegraph for many, many years. Climbing into the press box at Hillsborough and asking if he could use the phone to call his mum to tell her that he was still alive. You hear stories like that and you recognise why these wounds were so deep for so many in Liverpool in the aftermath. When the nation really should have been rallying around with sympathy and support, it was being led by the disgraced former editor of The Sun, Kelvin McKenzie, to actually malign and blame the families or the supporters themselves for the deaths of their fellows. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Sheila Coleman, who is a spokesperson for the Hillsborough Justice campaign, you might need a new name for your campaign, Sheila, because justice um, has has happened. Well, no, we still we still haven't truly got everything booked for this today. Is just um, yeah, seven long years fighting and campaigning, and let it um, 
stand as a testimony, as an inspiration to other people fighting injustice, never give up. That's all I can say because uh, I've seen people die along the way, people people struggle and suffer, and we've had doors shut in our faces over many years. But today, the jury listened, and uh, we have to commend the jury for their enduring commitment of sitting through these inquests. And um, returning these verdicts. When you, when you woke up this morning, when you got out of bed this morning, Sheila, in, in, in your heart of hearts, did you think this was going to happen? Oh, I, I flew in from Dublin. I was like, um, I, I just kind of, I, I set my alarm clock for half four and lay awake all night waiting for the alarm to go off and uh, went straight to the airport and come over back here. And um, I, I had a feeling, a gut instinct, but a spokesperson for the campaign, I wrote three press statements, three press re- releases, um, and I'm only going to need one of them. Really? For that. So, I'm just so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've gotten so used over the years to having to write sad ones where we've been, you know, rejected and justice hasn't been served. And um, it's just so wonderful because, as you know, the justice campaign... Um, you know, involves survivors as well as fam- bereaved families. Of course. And um, for the survivors, this is just a total vindication. Um, it's come back as a unanimous decision. Fans' behaviour played no part. We've been saying that for 27 years. And it really is appalling that in these courts, at these inquests, that the police fought against to try and lay, use the coroner's court to lay blame at the fans' door. But the jury didn't buy it. Um, is, is, yeah, that, is that? Is that? I, I know. Sense. I know that you, you 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 will have to go back into court at some point. But I'll, I'll hang on to you for as long as I can, if I may. Was yeah, was, was yeah, that was that yeah. the most important element for the families? That the notion that the fans made no contribution to the tragedy, as opposed to the finding that they were in fact unlawfully killed. No, it was. I think they were of equal measure, to be honest with you, because um, they both went to the heart of the matter. They both went, sorry, I'm just giving a survivor a hug. Um, Don't let me stop you. Don't let me stop you. No, 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 I'm sorry. He's the one who hugged me, actually. Uh, They were both of equal measure. Um, You know, one followed the other, and it was just, we got the unlawful killing. And then we got that the fans' behaviour was in no way played a part. I actually argue that because fans' behaviour did play a part. It played a part in saving lives and that number of 96 would have been much higher had it not been well we for, just heard from one uh, fan who, who, who yes, happened, yes. happened to be a doctor and was but, but, but responsible for arranging John, the triage that john well, indeed yeah, down yeah. on down on the pitch he was on I just before john, you yes, yes. i thought you might and um, john and i yeah john and i go back to 1989 on this one and um so yes and then um, it, it, it's amazing, if you know. If, if, and you, you only have to look at how his evidence was dismissed many years ago. And John will tell you the impact that had on him. Um, there's so many people here today who... It, it's, it's such a strange feeling here. We're in the middle of an industrial estate because that's where the court is located, in an industrial unit. And um, what a strange place to get justice. Nice. Strange <laughs> but indeed. We, yeah. If someone yeah, yeah. listening to this program is, is, is of an age or, or, or an outlook that renders them unfamiliar with the history of Hillsborough, could you, in your own words, explain why you think it's taken 27 years to get to here? It's taken 27 years because it occurred in 1989 at the height of um, high unemployment, um, an alienated uh, work and class the north uh, of the country was decimated um we had the miners strikes we had high unemployment in liverpool liverpool as a city had a very negative reputation um we had the policing of the poll tax riot the uh miners strikes etc and uh, and football uh, was viewed through the lens of hooliganism. When the disaster occurred at Hillsborough, um, football fans were being treated like animals. The, the terminology in uh, police uh, orders for the day was animal terminology. People were corralled and herded into pens. So basically, everything came together and the climate was there where it was easy to lay the blame at uh, Liverpool fans in particular, football fans and Liverpool fans in particular and um, we have lived with that stigma for many, many years but today 
the negative reputation of Liverpool is no more. And those of us that held our head up high through the negative years could hold them even a little bit higher. And this came about because for 27 years, ordinary people wouldn't give up. We had every door shut in our face. But when we had it shut, we found another way around. People kept saying, no, there's nowhere you can go. But we wouldn't believe them. And we just kept chipping away. We had our own Berlin Wall. And eventually it came crumbling down in 2012 when our... our um, evidence that we've been saying for years was proved through the HIC report and today we we further have it in terms of um, a legal decision. This is the first legal decision we have had in our favour. In 2012 we had the inquest verdict quashed but we did not have any ruling. This is the first legal verdict that's gone in our favour in 27 years. Think how that feels. Think how these families must feel. I was sitting with the, the family of uh, Ian Glover who died and his father was at the forefront of our campaign. Yes. He wasn't there today. He died. I was sitting with the Glover family. I was sitting with adults who were children when I first knew them and they cried. They cried for their brothers, they cried for their father. But I tell you what, they are proud because they're proud of what they did for 27 years. Is it too early to ask you what's next? No, it's not too early. I mean, we would expect criminal proceedings, obviously because there is ongoing investigation into the possibility of criminal proceedings. We're limited what we can say. But nevertheless, um, this has to go in the favour and we would hope that I would hope that when we go back in court now the coroner recommends <laughs> criminal proceedings we would also recommend um, and we would hope that the BPP responds swiftly um, to uh, the need for a criminal investigation obviously we'll pose that in the affirmative we would also call on the uh, Chief Constable of South Yorkshire to resign with immediate effect and we would call on those senior officers of South Yorkshire um, to have their pensions taken off them immediately and we would like to dictate to the least big those who retired early on grounds of ill health and return the pension and can I just tell you that the people of Merseyside pay Norman Beckham's pension because he then went on to be chief constable of Merseyside. Let's not forget that for people in the rest of the country, that after Hillsborough, the people of Liverpool and Merseyside were policed as because two ex senior police officers of uh, South Yorkshire Police who were involved either at Hillsborough or at, in, the, in the aftermath and the cover-up went on to become Chief Constables of Merseyside. Well, we, as you we say, we, 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 need, we need to wait for the coroner's findings to, 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 to conclude uh, that what that role that, may... That's a what, statement of fact, though. That's a statement of fact. We will be saying that in a press statement um, in about half an hour's time. When are you going back in? Do you know? Yeah, I'm going back in now because um, others have gone back in. Okay. So I've actually stayed out here talking well, to you. I but um, I just would just like to say to use this opportunity to thank um, all Liverpool fans from right across the country and internationally, but also the good people of this country uh, in every city who supported us over years. Without the support on a national and international level, we couldn't have survived. Um, it is because of good people that we are here. And um, it's always good to know that there are more good people than bad people. So thank you to each and every one of you, whether you just retweeted something for us in the later days or just wrote to us and said you were thinking of us. Thank you for that. Sheila Coleman, a spokesperson, the spokesperson for the Hillsborough Justice Campaign.